Okay, so I got this qu this question from Hora uh, from a Chinese designer called uh, Zhang Xiao Ran. Uh, I hope it, I said that name right. So uh, he asks, uh, how can I recreate the China Mobile's logo step by step in Illustrator? Uh, so I actually I actually answered the question here in in text, but um, he said that his English isn't that great. So uh, he asked me to do a video tutorial. So I'm going to show you quickly um, how. Um, I got about to recreating this logo. So actually, um, it's it's a very simple logo, um, and I'm not sure why you're trying to recreate it. But anyway, it's it's a it's a good example, and it's a good exercise to uh, look at it and try try to recreate it, if, even if you're not going to use it for anything. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I just grabbed a image here for reference. So I'm going to go back to Illustrator and drag this one in. So it's pretty decent resolution here, so I can work around it. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's just sitting there. I can make this into um, this layer that just came in. I can make it a template. I just go into the menu and uh, select template here. So it's going to lock the layer and make it semi-transparent. So I can't I can't really work on this layer. So I have to create a new one. So uh, in the layer panel here, I can just create a new layer, and now I can work on top of this. So um, by looking at this logo, it's it's quite simple and it's very geometric. So um, actually, the other answer that was on Quora uh, was from another user, and he was saying like, uh, use a pen tool because you know uh, you you'll be able to draw around the, the the lines and everything, but my recommendation is to, by looking at this logo, it's quite geometric. So it's, it looks like it was made up by basically circles and straight lines. Um, so it's good exercise to look at the logo, look at the shape, and see how it was made up. So in this case, uh, I'm pretty sure it was made up with straight lines and circles. Because, you know, straight line here and straight, always straight lines and, and these round elbows here. So we can actually make this either with only straight lines and then round off the elbows or we can build up using circles uh, first and then you know draw the the lines coming off in in parallel you know parallel lines coming off in these these directions and then we can build the shape from from that so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go to the ellipse tool and I'm just gonna eyeball uh, how the circles would would fit around these uh, these round parts on the shape here. So I'm pretty sure it's not that accurate. I'm going to give it a very visible uh, stroke there so I can see what I'm doing. And it doesn't need to be that thick. Okay. So I can actually zoom in here. So it's not going to be 100% uh, exact, but we're just going to try the best we can here. So uh, another circle right here. I'm just eyeballing how this would align here. So in this case, uh, in this stage, we can actually turn off the uh, the smart guides, which is command U. Yeah. And so it doesn't just lock into, you know, unneeded positions and sizes. So we can work freely with the circles like this. So I'm holding down shift, so we are drawing down uh, perfect circles here with the ellipse tool. Okay, so, oh, and actually, uh, if you look at this particular symbol, you can see that it's actually, we actually only have to draw the top uh, half of it, and then we actually rotate it and, you know, duplicate and rotate it um, to, you know, build the rest of the shape, which is uh, exactly the same as the top part. So I'm just... I'm just concentrating on the top part and then I'll I'll duplicate it so you can see what I'm talking about. So the third one goes here. Something like this. Yeah. That seems right. There. And another one here. There. And I think I'll need a couple more over here. This is looking pretty messy right now, but it's just to, you know, don't worry about the mess. We're just 
uh, laying down the, the curves here so we can clean it, clean it up soon. And the last one goes right here. So I'm not really worrying about the mess I'm making here. I'm just uh, making sure that I have, so I have these curves, you know, which look like perfect curves, they're already laid down. Okay, so um, what I can do now is I can actually, to clean this up, I can actually use the scissor tool, which is, uh, I'm sorry, it's over here, scissors tool there. So I'm, I've selected this circle and I just click here and here and delete this bottom half here so we can start cleaning up just to make it easier to you know to see things so that we just have um, the section that we need left you know so I'm getting this the scissors tool is the shortcut is C there there you go and this one Okay. And last one here. Oops, sorry. Okay. So we have these curves basically um, laid down. So now what we can what we can do here is draw some straight lines, um, tangentizing. You know, touching these circles uh, where they would you know touch them to create this continuous uh, curve you know this path continuous path here so in this case uh, we have to you have to you have to be careful you know not to um, I'll just turn back uh, smart guides with command U you have to be careful not to do something like uh, wrongly guess where where it would tangentize so if I'm probably, you know, I think I think this would be correct, and then when I look at the uh, the structure, I can see that the line is actually crossing into the, the curve. So it's quite difficult to uh, eyeball a tangent like this because there's always going to be some sort of intersecting like this, which would, you know, if we're going into the perfectionist level, um, you have to use something else than your your eyeball to create these tangents so what I'm gonna do actually is use a script which is common tangents so what I'm gonna do is take all these shapes I'm gonna duplicate the actually I'm gonna first I'm gonna draw the the uh, the right the, the angle that I need which is kind of 320 degrees here it's telling me so that sounds that looks right and I'm going to just snap it to this point here. <clears throat> so now when I duplicate these shapes, I'm going to use them to create tangents. So I'm going to duplicate these and throw them over here. Snap it to that point there. So now I know that um, if I create a tangent, uh, a line from probably around this point to the same point on this on this object here, um, it's going to be a perfect tangent, and I'm going to do that using uh, the script that I said. So I'm going to select these two guys. I need to find the common tangents between these two guys. So I'm going to go to scripts, common tangents, there, and it's just found you know just found the, the perfect point where this this straight line should join on this curve. So I just did that for me. So that's you know, uh, that's much more accurate than me trying to eyeball these two points and trying to guess uh, where would be the perfect tangent point on these curves. And now that I have this one, I can actually delete it, and then I can actually uh, I'll just uncheck scale strokes and effects, and let's make this bigger there. And again, it's not it's not really perfect to the um, to the reference, but at least we're making a perfectly, you know, geometric um, shape here. So same thing goes with with uh, with these two curves here. I'll just select them and go to uh, common tangents. There you go. 
delete that. Same go same goes with this one. Boom. So these these uh, scripts are really really good, um, and you can you know find these scripts online or you can write them in JavaScript uh, if you know JavaScript or you can get someone to write them for you. Uh, if you need something, just Google. You know, there's probably someone who's having the same problem as you and someone who's found a script or something. So this is how I found all these scripts here. Um, okay, so that's. Uh, that's solved this problem. So now what we what we can do, um, I think this uh, this line here on the opposite side is is the same angle as this one, only just you know flipped over the side. So I can actually take uh, take this one and flip it with the O key, which is the shortcut, and there you go. And you can just flip it, and it just you know snaps. Uh, with shift it snaps 180 degrees and it just flips perfectly and you've already got your tangent on the other side as well so I can do that with every one of them I set the uh, the flip uh, axis to be the anchor on the top of the uh, circle so I, that way you know I'm sure that it's it's going to be perfectly symmetrical to this curve right here because um, these these curves have anchor points in, in the middle there where the where the mirror axis should be so I'm going to do the same in each one of them now again all this work is going to be done just once if you look at the uh, the bottom half we're just going to duplicate this top half so um, we're going to save a lot of work there and last one right here there you go. Okay. So I can actually uh, on these lines they have to be longer. I just hold down shift. Yeah. There you go. And shift. Yeah, this is okay. That's okay. And this doesn't have to be this big. And neither does this one. Okay, just cleaning it up here. Actually, you can go down here. These ones, so it's easier to understand what's going on here. And extend this one here. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So I think that's that's what we need here. So I'm just gonna chop this one off with a you know, vertical there. And now we're ready to duplicate this, these shapes right here. So, sorry, um, duplicate this with Option or Alt on PC. And I'm gonna rotate it with the Rotate tool and holding down Shift. There you go. Oops. And now we just position it um, where it should be. So, I guess this should be right here, and right about there. Yeah, yeah, that looks right. And I have some duplicate lines here which I don't need. These two. Okay, so um, right now, basically, if I hide this reference, I have the basic uh, skeleton in order to uh, paint this and make it make the, the final shape. So actually I'm gonna make these ones longer. Yeah. Okay, that looks okay. And these don't need to be this long. These two, that's fine. Yeah, this looks right. Okay, so I'm just gonna hide the reference here. Um, I hope you can see this on the video because the lines are very thin and uh, I'll just make them thicker just so it's easier to see there. There you go. So this is still kind of messy but what I have to do is I have to paint inside to build the shape. So I just select this and go to the, the live paint bucket. So I just, in the live paint, bu paint bucket, I'll just click to make a, a live paint group 
with this and now I can paint inside um, all these shapes. So if I look at this, I'm gonna, I, what I want to do is paint uh, wherever it's white so I can build the shape from there. Um, so I'm gonna choose you know, just any odd color and just paint it inside of there. I'm just gonna make sure that um, there are some tiny tiny shapes here that um, yeah yeah this this looks good just gonna check if there are any tiny little shapes uh, which need a uh, filling and which it just skipped by but it looks okay yeah that looks fine over here perhaps yeah Sorry, is this right? Yeah. yeah, that's good. Okay, so now that we have the shape, we're almost there. We can actually, let me hide this. We can expand this uh, fill, you know, this, this paint, paint fill group, whatever it's called, sorry, uh, live paint groups. <laughs> you can expand it and make it into individual paths. So now we can work with this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ungroup everything. So Command Shift G to ungroup it. Now it's just, you know, bunch of shapes. And I can actually select the, the, the stroke here and tell it to select similar objects. It's gonna select everything that's, you know, similar to that. So all the strokes, delete all that. And now the, everything that's green here is the shape that we need. We just need to uh, do a Pathfinder here, select everything and go to Pathfinder and I'll merge, I'll just unite all these objects. I'll hold down, hold down Alt or Option and now expand. So now I have one single, uh, you know, uh, path here, which is, you know, the main uh, symbol here. Now, the, uh, the only thing we need now is to make the circle and to punch it out. So I'm just going to draw this big circle around it with the reference. And we can even, um, sorry, we can even uh, select these and align them to make sure they're centered. It's aligning to the artboard. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, I mean this doesn't look 100% perfect, but at least I'm sure that it's geometrically, you know, accurate, um, and the circle is uh, centered uh, in relation to the symbol. So that's good enough for me, and um, that's what I need. So I'm going to take the circle, send it to the back, select both shapes and punch it out minus front here with a pathfinder and um, just gonna fill it or actually I can actually uh, display the the background and take it off template oops take it off template I can sample the color with the eyedropper tool and actually Uncheck these to sample color from the image. There you go, we got a blue there. Actually, we can select the shape and sample the color from the image. There. So now the shape is filled with the blue from the image. I'll just set this back to how I had it. And this is pretty much done. I can delete the image. And now I have the vector symbol for China Mobile logo. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope uh, you can use these uh, skills and this, the, the script, in that case, uh, the common tangent script. I use it all the time for all sorts of stuff and it really helps me out. And uh, yeah, I, I hope this is a good exercise and you can use these skills uh, to do you know, other things, uh, create your own logos, uh, whether it be you know, a vectorizing a, a drawing um, or, you know, uh, recreating logos that already exist just for uh, exercise, which is excellent exercise, by the way. 
And uh, yeah, I'll see you around. Thank you.